All right, guys, this video is going to cover Module 7, Homework 4, Simplifying Complex Fractions. So complex fractions means it's a fraction within a fraction. So in this section, we'll determine when we can immediately multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator and simplify a complex fraction. So let's go ahead and let's simplify this complex fraction. So you can really see here 9 over 20 all over 11 over 16 is just a bunch of stuff. It's a fraction within a fraction. I like to really highlight this middle fraction bar because it really helps me see that, okay, it's 9 20, it's 9 over 20 all over 11 over 16. Because now I can rewrite this because fraction bars mean divide as 9 over 20 divided by 11 over 16. So now we've done this before. We can divide fractions. We can keep change flip. So we're going to keep the first fraction the same. We're going to change our operation from division to multiplication. And we're going to flip that last fraction. So our first fraction's going to stay the same. It's going to stay 9 over 20. We're going to keep it the same. We're going to change our operation from division to multiplication, and we're going to flip this last fraction. So instead of 11 over 16, we now have 16 over 11. So now we can multiply straight across. So now we can multiply straight across. So up top, we have 9 times, oops, 9 times 16, which would give us 144, divided by 20 times 11, which would give us 220. So our last step is to simplify. So then simplify. We always want to simplify our fractions. So let me see, what does 144 and 220 have in common? I think they both have a 4, so let's see, 144 divided by 4 goes in evenly, will give us 36. 220 divided by 4 goes in evenly to give us 55. So let's try that, and then we'll see if we can simplify further from there. So let's take out a 4 from the top and the bottom. Let's divide out that GCF of 4 from the top and the bottom. So we said 144 divided by 4 was 36. All over 220 divided by 4, we said, was 55. Now, just making sure there's nothing that 36 and 55 have in common, so we know this is our final answer. We cannot simplify it any further. So again, we change our fraction, complex fraction, to a division problem, and then we ch keep change flip, multiply across, and then simplify. So now let's do something just a little bit more our speed. So simplify the complex fraction x plus 4 all over x over x minus 6 over x. So now, again, I can really highlight this middle fraction bar. Remember, fractions mean divide. So that way I can rewrite it as x plus 4 over x divided by x minus 6 over x. Again, we can do keep change flip to divide our fractions or stay change flip or multiply by the reciprocal. They all mean the same thing. Either way, we're going to keep the first fraction the same as x plus 4 divided by x. We're going to change our, option, our operation from division to multiplication, and we're going to flip this last fraction. So x minus 6 over x, we're going to flip it so that it's x over x minus 6. Now we're multiplying, so now we're going to multiply straight across. All right, so multiplying straight across. I have x plus 4 times x, so I have x times x plus 4, just writing that x out front so it looks better, all over x times x minus 6. So x times x minus 6. I'm multiplying it in any order, so that's why I was able to flip this around, just to make it look a little bit better. But now I can see, okay, let's simplify. They both have an x in common, so I can factor or divide out that x from the top and the bottom. And then we're left over up top with x plus 4. 
and we're left over with x minus 6 on the bottom. These are not the exact same factors, so they cannot cancel. Nothing else can be canceled, nothing else can be simplified. We're done. So our final answer is x plus 4 over x minus 6. All right, each time we get a little bit more complex, so let's go to the next page. These look scary, so don't, don't be scared off. We're going to do it together. So simplify the expression 4 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 all over x times x minus all over x over x minus 1 plus 1 over x plus 1. Ooh, that's a lot. All right, again, I just want to really show this middle fraction bar so that you kind of can maybe see a little bit clearer what's going on. This one's different because the previous one, I had one fraction divided by one fraction, so I was able to do the keep change flip thing. This thing, I have two fractions that are being subtracted, two fractions that are being added. So instead of getting a common denominator up top, making that one fraction, subtracting, simplifying, all that good stuff, and then same thing on the bottom, getting common denominator, adding, simplifying. Instead of doing all that, let's just get rid of our fractions. So fractions mean divide. So in order to get rid of our fractions, we can do the opposite. So the opposite of dividing means we can multiply. We did this back on test one. So let's multiply everything by the LCD to get rid of our fractions. So looking at this, our LCD, let's make our denominators the same. Our denominators are x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, and x plus 1. So making those all the same, putting them together, our LCD should be x minus 1 times x plus 1, making them all the same, putting this together. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by the LCD to get rid of our fractions. All right, so this LCD is going to go to every single fraction. And if you want to write it x minus 1 times x plus 1, it's just a regular fraction. So if you want to write it over 1, go for it. Because remember, whenever we multiply fractions, we're going to do top times top, bottom times bottom. So let's go for it. So just 4 over 1 times our LCD of x minus 1, x plus 1. So top times top. So 4 times our LCD, x minus 1, x plus 1 all over x minus 1 times 1, which is just x minus 1. Next one, so minus 2 times our LCD, x minus 1, x plus 1, all over x plus 1 times 1, which is just x plus 1, all over x times our LCD, so x times x minus 1, x plus 1, all over on the bottom x minus 1 times 1, which is x minus 1, plus 1 times our LCD, which 1 times x minus 1, x plus 1 is just x minus 1, x plus 1. I don't need to write that 1 out front. All over x plus 1 times 1, which is x plus 1. So if you notice, the top of our fractions, the LCD went to the top of every fraction. The bottom of our fractions are multiplied by 1, so the bottom stayed the same. Again, the LCD went to the top of each fraction. The bottom was multiplied by 1, so the bottom stayed the same. So now let's cancel to see what cancels out. Everything should cancel out nicely. If it didn't, you have the wrong LCD, so go back and check your work. So x minus 1's gone. x plus 1's gone. x minus 1's gone. x plus 1's gone. So now we are just left over with 4 times x plus 1 minus 2 times x minus 1. So those fractions went away, so that's good. All over x times x plus 1 plus x minus 1. Looking better. Okay, so now we got rid of some of our fractions, so that's better. Now let's simplify. So let's distribute this 4. So 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is plus 4. 
Let's next distribute this negative 2. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. All over, let's distribute this x. So x times x plus 1 would give us x squared plus x. And then let's distribute this positive, which is a positive 1 outside. It's going to stay the same. So plus x minus 1. All right, getting better. Let's combine some like terms. So if we have 4x minus 2x, 4x minus 2x would give us 2x. And then color. If we have 4 plus 2, 4 plus 2 would give us 6. So 2x plus 6 all over on the bottom. I have x squared. Combining like terms, x plus x would give us 2x. So positive 2x plus 2x minus 1. All right, we're getting better. Let's see if we can factor something out to see if any factors can cancel. So 2x plus 6. So here our GCF would be 2. So factoring out that 2, we're left over with x plus 3 all over x squared plus 2x minus 1. So here there's no GCF. Our a in front of x squared would be 1. Our b in front of x would be 2. Our c out by itself would be negative 1. We're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us a times c. The same two numbers to add together to give us b, which is 2. a times c is 1 times negative 1. So what two numbers multiply together to give us negative 1 and add together to give us 2? Nothing. So if I have 1 and 1, I had to have different signs. So one's positive, one, one's negative one. That would add to give us zero. Nothing works here. So nothing works in blanks. So it's not factorable. There is no GCF, nothing we can do to factor. So it's going to stay x squared plus 2x minus 1. No factors cancel, so we're done. So our final answer is 2 times x plus 3 all over x squared plus 2x minus 1. All right, next one for this page. Simplify the given complex fraction 4 plus 12s to the negative 1 power all over 1 minus 9 s to the ne negative 2 power. So remember, negative exponents flip stuff down to the bottom. Also remember this negative 1 is only applied to whatever directly underneath it. So that negative 1 is only applied to the s. Likewise, the negative 2 is also only applied to the s. So let's rewrite this in fraction form. So I have 4 plus 12 s to the negative 1. So that 12 is up top. It's going to stay up top. That negative 1 means that s is going to the bottom of the fraction. So s to the first power, which is just s. So going back to properties of exponents, module 2, homework 5, all over 1 minus 9s to the negative 2 powers. So 9 is up top. It's going to stay up top. That s is the negative exponent, so that means it's going to go to the bottom of the fraction. So it's um, 9 over s squared. So 1 minus 9 over s squared. So now it's just like the previous um, one. I can't do state change flip here because I have two separate fractions. So instead of combining this into one fraction by adding, getting common denominator, adding, subtracting, simplifying, so then I can state change flip, let's forget it and let's uh, multiply everything by the LCD. So looking at our one big fraction. So looking at our denominators, our denominators are s and s squared. So if this one had two s's, then they would be the same. So our LCD should be s squared. Remember, I can't, I can't um, take anything away. I can only multiply to add to it. So s squared, if you want to write it as s squared over 1, go for it. So this LCD is going to go to every single fraction. So that will give us 4 times our s squared, which is 4s squared, plus, remember, top times top, bottom times bottom. So 12 times s squared up top, 
all over s times 1, which is s on the bottom, all over 1 times s squared, which is s squared, minus top times top, so 9 times s squared is 9s squared, all over s squared times 1, which is s squared. Again, this s squared or LCD went to the top of every fraction. The bottom was multiplied by 1, so our bottom stayed the same. All right, let's simplify. So 4s squared plus, I have 12s squared divided by s. So if I have two s's up top, one on the bottom, that means one's going to cancel out. We're left over with one. So plus 12s, two up top, one on the bottom. So one canceled out. We're left over with one. All over s squared. Um, minus 9s squared over s squared. So 2s is up top, 2 on the bottom. All s's are gone. So minus 9. All right, so 4s squared plus 12s, not like terms, so I can't combine it. All over s squared minus 9, not like terms, so I can't combine it. So let's see if we can factor to see if any factors cancel out. So up top, 4s squared plus 12s. Looking at that, it looks like there's a GCF of 4s. They both have 4s in common. So if we factor or divide out that 4s, we're left over with s plus 3. That 4 came out front. I have 2s. So I'm taking out 1, so 1's left over. 12 divided by 4 is 3. I took out that s, so we're left over with s plus 3. All over s squared minus 9. There's no GCF here. But I do notice we're subtracting two perfect squares. So this is going to be a difference of perfect squares. Meaning I can factor s squared minus 9 down. s squared, we know s is s times s. One's positive, one's negative. 9's a perfect square, 3 times 3. So s plus 3, s minus 3. So s plus 3 times s minus 3. So now they both have s plus 3s in common. So now our s plus 3s cancel out. That's nice. And we're left over with 4s up top all over s minus 3 on the bottom. Even though there's s on the top and the bottom, they're not the same factor, so I can't cancel them out. We're done. Nothing else can cancel. So 4s all over s minus 3 is our final answer. All right, last page for this section. All right, so simplify the complex fraction 5 over m squared times n plus 9 over m n squared all over 15 over m squared n minus 1 over m n squared. Ooh. All right, so separate fractions, so I can't do keep it, change it, flip it, because it's not the one big fraction divided by one big fraction. So let's go ahead and multiply everything by our LCD to get rid of our fractions. So looking, this is our main fraction bar, so I can easily see, okay, up top and on the bottom. So looking at our denominators, I have m squared n, m n squared, m squared n, m n squared. I want to make them the same. So I see that they all need two m's, so m squared. And they all need two n's, so n squared. So here's our LCD, m squared, n squared. And if you want to write it over one, go for it. So let's distribute top times top, bottom times bottom. All right, remember, top times top, bottom times bottom. So top times top, 5 times m squared, n squared. So 5m squared, n squared, all over 1 times m squared, n, plus 9 times our LCD, m squared, n squared, all over 1 times m, n squared, all over 15 times our L LCD of m squared, n squared, 
all over 1 times m squared n minus 1 times m squared n squared all over 1 times m n squared. Whew. That's confusing. But moral of the story, this LCD of m squared n squared went to the top of every fraction. m squared n squared went to the top of every fraction. The bottom of our fraction stayed the same because the bottoms were multiplied by 1, so it stayed the same. So now our fractions should cancel out. If they don't, you did it wrong. So go back and check your work. Check your LCD. All right, so m squared up top, m squared on the bottom, done. Two ends up top, only one on the bottom, so that means one's going to cancel out, one's going to be left over. m squared divided by m, so one's canceling out, one's staying there. Two ends, n squared divided by n squared, cancel out, no ends are left over. m squared divided by m squared, cancel out, no m's are left over. n squared divided by n, that means one's going to cancel out, one's going to be left over m squared divided by m, one's going to cancel out, one's going to be left over. n squared divided by n squared, they both cancel, we're done. All right, let's see what's left over. So I have 5n plus 9m, not like terms, so I cannot do anything else there, divided by 15, 1n was left over, minus 1m was left over. Not like terms, can't do anything else there. No GCF on the top. Nothing I can factor, no GCF on the bottom, nothing I can factor. So that's it, we're done. So that crazy thing was just that one step. 5n plus 9m all over 15n minus m. All right, last one. So simplify the complex fraction. Remember, if you need to pause it, rewind, fast forward, slow down, speed up, you do you. All right, so simplify the complex fraction. 4 over x minus 2 over x plus 1 all over 1 over x plus 1. So this is our main fraction bar, so I can really see what's going on. We have different fractions on the top, so that means I can't keep it, change it, flip it. I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD. So let's look at our denominators, because we need to make these denominators all the same. So if we have x, x plus 1, x plus 1. So our LCD here, that x is going to have to be there, and that x plus 1 is going to have to be there. And we can write it all over 1. So our LCD should be x times x plus 1, making them all the same. So let's distribute, let's multiply this LCD to every single term, every single fraction. Remember, top times top, bottom times bottom. That LCD should go to the top of every fraction. The bottom's going to be multiplied by 1, so the bottom's going to stay the same. So 4 times our LCD of x times x plus 1 all over x times 1, which is x minus 2 times our LCD, x times x plus 1, all over 1 times x plus 1, x plus 1, all over 1 times x times x plus 1, so just x times x plus 1, all over 1 times x plus 1, which is just x plus 1. Again, this LCD, x times x plus 1, went to the top of every fraction. The bottom was multiplied by 1, so the bottom stay the same. So our fraction to cancel out nicely. If they don't, go back and check your work because you did it wrong. So our x's are gone. x plus 1's gone. x plus 1's gone. Let's see what's left over. So we are left over with 4 times x plus 1 minus 2x all over x. All right, let's distribute this 4 up top. So we have 4x plus 4 minus 2x all over x. Let's combine some like terms. So 4x minus 2x would leave us with 2x. So 2x plus 4 divided by x. 2x plus 4 are not like terms, so I can't combine, but they do have a GCF. So let's take out that GCF of 2 to see if any factors can cancel. So taking out that 2, we're left over with x plus 2 all over x. Unfortunately, no factors can cancel. Nothing else we can do, so we're done. Final answer, 2 times x plus 2 
all over X. So that is all of module seven homework four. You can now complete your module seven homework four homework assignment. If you have any questions, please let us know. If not, thank you for watching.